Hello and welcome to this video tutorial, which will demonstrate the main steps to add the Mind Fusion Diagram Control to a WinForms project and to set up some of the additional controls provided with it. First, we create an empty WinForms project. Then, from the Mind Fusion Diagramming for WinForm tab in the toolbox, we drag and drop the ruler control. This is an auxiliary control. It's a nice addition, but it's not needed by the diagram to render itself. What is needed, however, is a diagram view. As you can see, there are several diagram view instances to choose from. Diagram view 3D, tabbed diagram view, and the classic diagram view, which is what we choose. The diagram view is not a diagram, but it automatically creates one. Even what we've created so far is enough to let users draw diagrams. Let's run the application. Here it is. You can draw different nodes and connect them. The diagram control for WinForms uses the MVC architecture where the viewer is independent from the controller. This means that we can create different diagram view instances and assign to them different diagrams, or the same diagram, or any combination that we want. Let's create a new diagram view. By default, it creates a second diagram instance, but we will assign the diagram property to diagram one. Let's run the application. As you see, once we change one of the views, the other reflects the change. Let's delete the second diagram view. We don't actually need it in this sample. Let's resize the ruler so it fits the available space. Next, we'll drag the shape toolbar from the toolbox and create a list with all available node shapes for the user to choose from. First, let's change the size of the shape icons that appear on the shape toolbar. By default, they're quite small, so we make them 24 by 24 pixels. Then we handle the shape clicked event, which is fired when the user selects a shape. In this case, we change the default shape for the diagram control with the one the user has chosen. Let's test this. We click on a shape and we draw it. Let's choose another shape. It works. Whenever we select a new shape, the control draws new nodes using it. It would be nice if we could type some text into the nodes, but in default, that's not possible. Let's change that. The property that allows typing into a node is called Allow in Place Edit and is disposed by the diagram view. We set it to true. Let's do one more thing about the styling. Let's change the color of the shape buttons in the shape toolbar and make the diagram use the same color when a shape is drawn. We choose a new color of the shapes and then we create a solid brush with the same color and assign it to diagram style dot brush. Now the diagram looks fine. We can type text and when we draw a shape, it is in the color of the button. As you see, the shape label is quite difficult to read. We can increase the font size, but we can also use the magnifier tool. Let's show a magnifier on right button click. We handle the mouse clicked event on the diagram view, where we check if the right button was clicked. If so, we enable the magnifier and invalidate the diagram view. Let's test how this works. We type some text, right-click on the shape, and here is the magnifier. Once again, a small shape. It works fine, but there's another way to do this as well, the zoom control. The difference is that the zoom control zooms the whole diagram, while the magnifier magnifies the area under it. We drag and drop the zoom control on the diagram view. We set its anchoring to top, bottom, and right, 
so it always stays to the right of the diagram and stretches when the form gets resized. We have to call it bring to front method to make sure that the zoom control renders on top the diagram view and the ruler. Then we have to set its target property to our diagram view one. Now we're ready to run the app. Let's create some shapes and type some text. We can now zoom the whole diagram or pan the view. We will add one more control to our application. That is the layer list view. We drag and drop it into the form. Let's set its anchors to top, left, and right. We need to set its diagram property to let it know which diagram the layers refer to. The layer list view allows the user to organize the diagram elements into layers. Each layer can be hidden or locked. Let's see a quick demonstration for it. Here we can create shapes without adding them to any layer. Now let's click the plus button to create a new layer. Let's activate it by clicking on the tick mark. From now on, whatever we draw on the diagram will be assigned to this layer. Let's create another layer and make it active. Add some shapes to it. When we click the visibility button, the shapes on that layer disappear. When we lock the layer, we can't move, delete, or connect the shapes on it. Let's add a final modification to our diagram sample. Let's automatically assign names to the layers and let's assign different colors to the shapes drawn in different layers. Let's start with the layer names. The diagram has a property named layers, which is strongly typed observable collection of type layer. We can handle the collection changed event for it and here is the method that handles it. In it, we check if the number of layers is bigger than zero and we assign to each layer the title layer, plus the incremental number of the layers count. Now let's run the final application. We create a layer and draw some nodes on it. As you see, they are with different colors. a new layer and new nodes, the color has changed. One more layer. Each layer has its nodes in a different color. And that's the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.